Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast, where we celebrate individuals and families, businesses, and organizations that seek out and promote the exploration, stewardship, conservation, access, and enjoyment of the outdoors. Anitra Hamper is our guest on the Outdoor Adventure Series today. Anitra is an award-winning travel and outdoor journalist. She specializes in fishing around the world. She is a former television news anchor and investigative journalist. Now, Anitra is joining us today to chat about her new venture, Reality. Anitra, it is a pleasure to have you back on the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. Welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be back. This is exciting. Fantastic. And for our listeners, uh, Anitra was first on our show, actually, it was almost a year ago. I think we met in May up in Casper, Wyoming, and uh, Anitra joined us on the podcast. That episode was July 22, episode 53. Now we're going to provide a backlink to it. But I am excited to have Anitra back because what she's doing right now is not for the faint of heart. And it is so exciting uh, to to kind of hear what you have been up to. First off, how are you doing? Where where are you, by the way? <laughs> right at this moment, I am in England, where I am for the next few months, just working remotely and um, staying with my partner here. And we're doing some projects here as well. So it's nice to be able to split time between the United States and England. And I will be doing some fishing. And um, yeah, so things are good. When I talked to you a year ago, there was something that I had said to you that someday I would love to host women's fishing trips. And I, I remember that saying that to you. And at that time, as it has been for a long time, it was a it was a Sunday sort of, I really want to do this. And within that year time, the the right things and the right people have come together to make that happen. In the coaching realm, we we talk about mindset and what you think about, you bring about, and you literally just bookended that process. Is you, you talked about it, you, we chat a little bit about it, and then almost a year later, well, here you are, almost ready to uh, see this go live and into fruition. And so, first off, tell us about the kind of fishing you are doing because this is not a little bass boat in the middle of a little lake out in central Indiana, Ohio, Michigan. This is a little different. Tell us about your fishing or angling adventures. Well, you know, I think fishing, like a lot of hobbies and passions that people have, is sort of a, a range. So you've got your bass fishing. You've got, I mean, I, I love fishing for bluegill with an old school bobber just as much as I love fishing for 600 pound tuna in the Atlantic. So there's there's something for everybody. And that's what I love about it. I have over the years, I've fished my whole life, but over the years I've gravitated towards the really unusual, big, the, the sort of freaky creatures that are, that exist out there, mostly out of curiosity. And I think that's the journalist in me that wants to know what's in that water and what is that. And then from just an environmental and conservation perspective, I want to know what's there because to be able to show what lives in these waters in different places around the world connects people to them and makes people care about that these things exist, some of them quite prehistoric, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, and makes them care about protecting them. So there's a lot of layers to why I do what I do, but I tend to gravitate towards the really, um, the challenging things, like the things in South America that I have done most recently, because they're a challenge. They require uh, strategy and tackle and really thinking through how to catch these these different species. So this past year, for our listeners, Anitra and she had just mentioned going down to South America. Tell us a few examples of the trips you have been on, because you're catching and and, and meeting up with uh, holding some fish that, for many of us, myself included, would put a shiver down my spine. <laughs> 
Well, and that's what makes them exciting. I have had so many conversations with people who don't fish that just cannot help themselves, but talk about it when you see these species that you go, what is that? It looks like a dinosaur. What is that? It's so big. So from whether it's the Wells catfish in Spain that was bigger than me in every direction, um, caught on uh, the River Ebro, or whether it's the Golden Masir in India at the junction, at the very uh, sacred junction, and it's the place in the world to catch these fish, you know, so I caught that there. Whether it's cod in Iceland, such an iconic fish for that destination, or the the Arapaima in Guyana, which is one of the one of its native habitats, to be able to um, see some of these fish up close, as we've talked about before, and just be enamored by their beauty, and that you get to have this very intimate moment with a species that we would never see. I mean, they live, some of them so deep in the water or they're just so, their, their habitats are, have them so hidden that they, that, that humans rarely ever see them. I think that's such a gift. And so if for me, it's, it's just a bit, a little bit addicting to be able to experience that. And really fishing is, is about nature too, right? It's not just about the big catch. I like to talk about, fishermen always say, oh, what's your personal best? For me, <laughs> yes, it's what also finds a fish. But for me, personal best is about like what's in here too. And connecting with nature in a way that, that you get to when you're fishing, all the things that happen between the fish, because let's face it, some days you blink, right? But being able to see butterflies and eagles flying overhead or monkeys in the trees, um, you know, iguanas swimming over to your boat. Um, that's a, that's so special. That connects you to nature in a way that is just calming and in at the moment where you really just get to reflect. So, yeah, I mean, it's not for everybody, but even non-anglers, let's face it, a, a story comes up that says, oh, some fish has been found that washed up and nobody knew that that even existed anymore. Whether you fish or don't fish, you can't, can't help you can't help but look at some of these things because they just look weird in a lot of cases. <laughs> Growing up, and I've shared this on a number of episodes, I have never fished in my life. I, I think I may have fished off the side of a dock, caught a bluegill. It doesn't count in my mind. It does not count. Yes, I think it does. All right. All right. And so you and I are having this conversation last year. This idea gets put out into the universe. How did reality come about? And you, you, this is actually directed down into Guyana and into this this ancient, well, the Amazon Delta, right, or the, the river, these rivers, very difficult to get to. So how did this, how did you get from this idea in the universe to what is soon to be very much a reality? Well, for years, I have traveled the world fishing and all the time when I go places, I'm generally with groups of men mm -hmm. and my experiences have all been incredible. But regardless of that, uh, there was, there, there's always, there's always a period at the beginning of the trip where I have to prove myself because um, it's just been very traditionally a male dominated activity. So while all my trips have, have worked out well, I just thought, wow, most women are not going to do that. In fact, uh, I, there's a new study out by the Recreational Boating and Fishing Foundation that talks about why women get into fishing, why they stay or why they leave. And one of the reasons they drop out of fishing is because the, the, the numbers are showing that like one in four active female anglers will not go fishing if they're the only woman. And so I've spent years doing this, being the only woman and having to sort of prove myself before everybody's comfortable. Mm -hmm. And the guys in the group realize, oh, okay, like we, we are going to have to babysit or she can handle, handle herself. And I, I feel like these are missed opportunities for women. Mm -hmm. Women are not going to go and, and put themselves in that situation, nor are they going to travel the world to do it. 
right? They won't do it in their own backyard. So I just, for a long time, I've wanted to find the right platform, the right opportunity, the right moment, and to change that, to be some kind of agent of change. Because, you know, I grew up with two older brothers, so I've gone through all the guy pledging, if you will. And I'm very comfortable around got men and fishing in groups and being by myself, maybe for a week on the riverbank and it's okay. But so several opportunities had come in the past that just really didn't, they did just didn't sit right with me and it just wasn't the right thing to offer. So my partner, Ian, is an international fishing guide and he was already doing trips in, in India and Nepal and we talked about going to South America and I shared this idea with him. I said, someday I want to offer a trip like this. And so we had set out to scout there. You know, he'd been there many, many times and we wanted to go and specifically scout. Is this viable for women? It's tough. So when we had gone, it, it was tough. The journey to get there is tough. And, and, but by the time I left and I got all the right ducks in a row and sat and reflected and I thought, this is it. You know, there are so many fantastic fly fishing trips for women all over the place. A lot of them are, um, they're, they're like weekends and whatnot, but they are very geared toward um, a different kind of experience. It's maybe sometimes it's first timers, uh, whatnot, but they're fly fishing. So there's nothing that exists that is going to, uh, what I like to say is, is as grit grabbing as this. It is hardcore. You will be challenged. Even the best anglers are challenged down there. So, but the payoff is the fact that, you, that your level of confidence is going to surge. So I wanted something like this, you know, just the journey to get there is long. It, I say long, it's, it's really not, but, but you don't just drive up and you get in a boat. You right. know, you're, you're, you're flying into Georgetown. You're taking a prop plane an hour and a half over the jungle that is so vast and dense. It looks like broccoli for an hour and a half. <laughs> and you think, wow, that's incredible. So you're flying into the heart of the rainforest in Guyana on the Esquibo River. And then once you land in your prop plane, then you're going to get on a, a boat and the Amerindian, native Amerindian guide is going to take us two hours to the lodge. So you are in the heart of the jungle. Now, People and, say, oh, and there's no cell plane. service there, I'm sure. No, uh, we get very intermittent, occasional with our lodge partner that has something set up, but it's it's not not reliable and it's very um, sparse. Right. So basically, you're you're mostly off the grid, but we're not camping. It's a, it's a lodge, but you 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 are very much a part of the environment around you. So yes, it's for women who love to fish, who have that that harder outdoor edge. Um, who really want to up their skills because you're going to use light tackle. You're going to use heavy tackle. I mean, some of the catfish there, some of the red tail and jow and lao lao can get up upwards of 100 to 250 pounds. You're going to have piranha, big black piranha with giant jaws that take off with your line all the time. So you're going to be challenged by tackle. But those are all things that are going to also bring you so much excitement when you pull up. I caught almost 30 different species when I was there. Wow. So multi-species destination, multi-tackle. So we want to offer workshops to so that you level up your game, not just for that trip, but going forward. And then from the women's standpoint, the, the ethos of reality, which Ian, my partner, and I started together, is because so many people say, wow, I really admire you doing that. And wow, I wish I could do that. And oh, I want to. So people just for fear or whatever kind of reasons or excuses they give themselves to not do it, they exist and, and those things are real. We want to provide an opportunity as people who have been there, people, people trust and provide inspiration to say, listen, let us show you how to do this. So if you want to go and do it on your own, you have the confidence and the skills to do that. And I think that's so important. I feel very passionate about that because I feel like so many women are missing 
that opportunity. I, I love how you've kind of laid out this, how this idea came to fruition. And I'm curious is it's, I don't have a TV, so I don't really watch like ESPN 87654, whatever those ESPN numbers are. I know there's these fly fishing. I don't know if there are fly fishing tournaments or uh, there could be, but bass tournaments. You hear about them all the time. You know, there's a lake, a bunch of bass boats going out for this three-day tournament. They stock the lake and everybody's doing what they're doing. Are those... And so the question that's in my mind is, who is your ideal client? Because even though I might be comfortable with with my reel, the 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 the, the tackle, the the boat, this is take this is taking it up not just a notch or two, but it's taking this is a full on life changing experience. And how do you? identify who that individual is who expresses the interest but is ready to say anitra i'm in mm -hmm. that's a great question and i've explored that for a long time and you know working in tv and you with um from the business standpoint and coaching recognize when you identify who that audience is you you make that a, a who's that person who is that avatar who is she in this case and in this case she is me she is me she is the woman who loves to fish and you know not all women are going to have fished their whole lives some of them may have just started but someone who wants to grow their skills who has a little bit of an, an outdoor edge and has that insatiable appetite for just like really cool things experiences taking fishing taking their life their confidence, their abilities, just up to that next level. The challenge is that's hard. That's scary. That's, that's intimidating to commit to. Mm -hmm. That's stepping outside of your comfort zone. And it's that, it's that little push that I, I want to inspire people to do. Um, I had a lady drop me a note. She's very interested, but she was like, I don't, think I can do this. It's it's here. You you can. And to be fair, it's not for everybody. So I, you know, you you also have to know your limits. Right. But um she is she's the the hard outdoors woman who, you know, again, we're not camping. And I think everybody thinks we're camping and we're roughing it, we're eating grubs. And I don't do any of that. Okay. We have a bed. <laughs> we have a shower. It's cold. But we have a shower, you know, and you're in a you're in a lodge. You're eating a native Amerindian, delicious, healthy food. For, um, so you're comfortable. But out in the boat, you know, you you are in the natural environment. So yes, you might see an anaconda. Is it going to come and eat you? No. You um, are going to hear howler monkeys in the trees. Are they going to come and attack you? No. It is so. You have to recognize your ambitions and limitations. And if there's something that truly freaks you out, like anything, like we all have our phobias, and you you, you recognize I, that's just not for me, that's okay. But there's a lot of other people who do fit that and who want that extra um, adventure because it really is just getting there is the adventure. And it's so fun. And to be able to look back and say, wow, you know, that wolf fish just really took me for a ride. And that's one of the reasons we're offering workshops, too, because we recognize that really high level anglers, the, the ones you're talking about that are on the TV shows, they can go to an environment like this and be very frustrated and challenged. So in a lot of times you have to go several times just to figure out what you need to figure out mm -hmm. to make it the best trip possible. So. From a time and money standpoint and frustration, that's what we want to eliminate. Ian's very um, technically skilled and will be offering workshops. On, so you have the best experience the first time. And it's cool to see a, like a wolf fish and say, wow, that's badass. Like that really is. And I did that. There, there's, there's just a moment there for people. Yeah. yeah. And for our listeners, I'm going to have a photo of uh, Anitra with her. 
pet wolf fish. It was her pet for about 30 seconds, and I think she had to give it back. Uh, that plus the arapaima. And, and, and by the way, which I thought was really cool, and is you're holding a fish that it, its lineage has been around for millions of years. I mean, we our lineage here in the U.S. goes back to the discovery of America. Forget the debate of who did it, but it's it's only a couple hundred years. Whereas these fish, their lineage has been around for millions of years. I just think that is like really, really cool. The it is and so to be so close to it was just almost overwhelming. Yeah. So when you have this trip and as you kind of uh, putting it, kind of designing what this experience is going to be like. This is an amazing experience. Will you wait till everybody gets down to the lodge before the workshops begin, or will you have anything beforehand to help people acclimate to what they can expect once they get down there? For sure. And that's a big part of it. We want, uh, we are scheduling a, a day to be in Georgetown just to sort of get your bearings. You'll probably land at midnight coming in from Miami. So we don't want to hop you on a prop plane five hours later. So to get acclimated for a day, we are providing an opportunity for people who want to rent tackle from us. We are working on that so we can provide that because you you can't just, you might have a rod that will work for something because of the diversity of tackle. So we want to make it accessible. We want to make, if you want to rent tackle from us, great. We we want to provide people with sort of a, like a starter kit of some basic lures and things to help you along the way. So it's very much, we want to sort of show you the ropes in a, in a really cool environment and um, an environment that you're just not going to experience anywhere else. And, you know, for we, we say, we it's really not for beginning anglers in that if you've never fished ever this is this is not a good start it's just it's just not so we want people to at least have fished before at least know how to handle the rod and reel because some of these fish will will just take it and we don't want it to take you with it so, right. but yeah so so we'll, we'll do some prep to get just we want people to feel comfortable and excited and then when we're there, some workshops on tying rigs and, you know, what um, what rigs to use that are going to be the most resistant to breaking off on the rocks and things like that. So people will, will be very much comfortable along the way. Okay. So your, your avatar is built around someone who is an experienced angler. Uh, has this innate sense of adventure, like what's what's around the bend, and I want to and I want to go and find it. I'm thinking about folks that we know in the Outdoor Writers Association of, of America, and I'm thinking right off the bat, like Christine Peterson. I mean, who who won? I think in Casper, she won the the push up contest. <laughs> yeah, you know, I didn't even bother go, entering it because it's like. I know how many I'm not going to be able to do. So someone like that who is just used to doing some extreme outdoor activities, both hiking, camping, hunting. Mm -hmm. uh, Lisa Ballard, who's the downhill uh, skier. And I don't know if yeah. she hunts and hikes and fishes, but, but, you know, to go down a hill, like at the speed she's going down, she's an ideal type athlete that would be right. into that. So I'm thinking someone who is just totally committed they're, they're They perhaps have an athletic background because there's a lot of discipline and stamina in pushing yourself. They have yeah. to have experience fishing. Uh, I'm thinking corporate, some type of corporate executives. I mean, there's corporate mm -hmm. executives out there that are completely, they're all in every day. Yeah. And Ideally, have you fished before? And, and so I, I'm, I, and I'm thinking you need to be on stage, talking to the people that are your ideal clients potentially. Mm -hmm. uh, TED Talks or Women Up or E Women's Network, places where there's a lot of women who say they're 
they're interested in things like this. But in those types of groups, their types, they're committed. Because I, I think, I mean, your ideal uh, outing, you, you want 10, you want five, do you want 10, do you want 15 uh, other anglers there with you? What, what, what's um, a good size for you? We're looking at 11. Oh. And so in the lodge, there will be shared rooms. It's just, it's a small lodge right. in the middle of the rainforest. So it's it's not a five-star resort. It's very comfortable, but it's, it's basic. So we have to have the the shared rooms. So, and with 11 people, you're only going to see everybody at, at at night, right? Because um, the boats are going to have two people and an Amerindian guide, and off you go. Somebody could be ten miles up the river, somebody else in a lagoon. It's just the Esquibo is huge, okay. so you won't see anybody except who you're in the boat with for the whole day. And then by the evening, we can come back and we can share stories over some great food. And I'll say you don't have to be an experienced angler. Well, you don't have to be a, a, a hardcore angler. You do have to have some experience so you so you don't get as frustrated but right i'm as interested in the people who are are curious about doing it and have some fishing experience and maybe just need some like motivation mentally yeah to for the confidence to do it as anybody else but yeah i mean definitely the hardcore people people who love nature of course um, right are good. Yeah. And, like people want to break come with somebody i mean yeah. if they but this is great for if two people want to come together, right. share a room, maybe you want to share a boat, and it's great for that. Yeah, and I'm thinking, again, I'm just kind of brainstorming. This is just where my head goes. I apologize in advance, but I'm thinking, who are the who are these these women? These this, this ideal client? Do they do extreme mountain climbing? Do they? Is El Capitan? Oh, that's a day <laughs> I've done that ten times. Do they hike the Fourteeners in Colorado, or do they? Heaven forbid they jump out of a plane. I mean, I will never jump out of it. Have you ever jumped out of a plane? I have not done that. You have not? I, See, I, I'm I'm like, you're like, that's a shock to me because <laughs> I thought well, you definitely would have done that for a story. Or <laughs> scuba dive with with sharks. And okay, I, I, we can kind of brainstorm to her uh, whatever you want to. But uh, I, just, I just think it's just so exciting. And a, a question that I'm also curious about and I love the idea that they're going to go out for this day of fishing, come back, sit around the campfire, have this great meal and share stories. And what's, what was it like out in the middle of the rainforest, whether it's the early morning? I mean, you and I share our coffee pictures. You've got your nice china and there's the nice field with the animals out in the pasture. And I've got my little uh, cup of coffee <laughs> here uh, out sitting in the backyard. What's what's it like out there in the middle of the rainforest, like in the morning or in the evening when it, the sun is setting? What's it like out there? Oh, it's like it's like a sound machine, and then you kind of forget that it's not a machine. It's the howler monkeys in the trees, the birds. I mean, you're fishing, and all all times of day, but particularly in the in the mornings or or like. As the sun is starting to set, macaws are are flying in pairs overhead. It is like it's like being in I say it's like being in the hung, hunger games mm. without the risk of death, right? Mm. So it's like, okay, somebody cue the electric blue butterflies, and then you just see these magical creatures floating by you, the river otters, the you know, rainbows all the time. So to be in that environment where it actually takes a minute because we're so, I think we've got so many electronics and artificial everything. It's really difficult to go, this is real. This is real. And a place like this still exists. And I'm, I feel like a guest in nature's house. And it's so special. The mornings and the evenings were, were beautiful. And then when the sun sets, it is, it is darkness. Like you would love that. I mean, you talk about stars. I felt like I was in a planetarium, but it was real. Oh well. Tell us a little bit about the lodge and what and the and the 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 individual that owns the lodge and what was 
what was this this individual, this family that that said, "Hey, let's put a lodge here," and because uh, I'm curious, I mean, it's uh, it's just a wonderful destination for the right person, but to to run a business out of this lodge, what was it like? To, what's it like to work with them? It's great. It's special. You know, again, the partners are what make it. Having Ian with the the technical expertise, the hospitality background, the international angling destination guiding mm -hmm. background, and then our partner there who has been affiliated with the the country's tourism department for 20 years. Okay. And is, he's very keen on safety. He's very keen on experience. Um teaching people to walk away, not just with great experience, but to learn something about the Amerindian culture. My guide, the last time I was there, had only ever been out of the jungle five times oh, his wow. whole life, and he's in his 50s. So our partner on the ground is very committed to having people appreciate, understand, experience part of the culture, too. And just really wants to make it a good experience. So you really are just, you're just a visitor in nature's house for a short period of time. And um, I should mention that the, the trip itself is, is 11 nights. So you'll have seven full days fishing. And again, we padded a day on each end just to get acclimated and get sorted. And then, you know, same thing on the back end. Okay. As you look back, on this trip and, and beginning to put the the pieces in place, you're still out there doing what you love to do, which is fish. And I imagine there's more than one, but there is there one moment that you kind of sat back safely and said, oh, wow, I cannot believe I just did this or I'm doing this right now. This you were just blown away, just given all the experiences you've had as a world traveler, as a as an angler in countries throughout the world. What, is there a moment or two you just look back and say, oh, wow? Yeah, I, I would say two specifically. I know we've talked about the wolf fish in the Arapaima quite a bit. And yeah. there's other great species like the, the uh, you know, the, a lot of different catfish and the vampire fish. Everything's equipped to like kill something and eat it or defend itself from being eaten, right? So everything's on everything else's menu there. Um, so it's fascinating to see all the different species. But I would say, to answer your question in particular, the the Arapaima, because um, I had to get in the water with it, and it's an obligatory air breather. It's this, it was an over 100 pounds. We couldn't accurately weigh it, but definitely over 100. So to catch it was very difficult because they come up every 20 minutes. And if you don't get your you, you cast in the right place to get it even tr attract its attention, well, you got to wait 20 minutes. So that's pretty painful. But even to to catch that fish, you can't get it in the boat. There's no getting it in the boat. It's bigger than the boat. So yeah. what's that phrase in Jaws? We're going to need a bigger boat. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not going to get it in the boat. So you have to you have to sort of steer it down a channel while you're fighting it and then be very mindful that these are also while they are powerful fish and they will knock you out with their armor like scales they're also very delicate so we want that's the most important thing so we we fight it all the way down the channel um my guide is paddling uh, me back, back down the channel and then once we land it um he gets in and again he's he's grown up in the jungle so he gets in with this fish and he's he's actually calming it down like like you might a dog it was wild to see this calming it down i got in the water with it to to get a quick photo and i'm just i'm looking at this thing and its scales are this big its face looks like something i'd seen in a museum somewhere and and it was almost overwhelming it was like a little bit emotional, I think, uh, which sounds very fruitful. But when you have a moment like that, to be so close to an animal of that, that sort of history and that so beautiful, it's magical. So there, there was that moment. And then the wolf fish, I didn't know if anything existed like these. I never even heard of a wolf fish, mm -hmm. right? And so 
I'd go down there. We'd say, oh, we're going to fish. Loop. So they live in, in like channels, right? Back channels. And beneath the surface of the murky water are just, I mean, just a, a matrix of logs and trees and things. And some of them that have probably been like that for hundreds of years. And they live below them. That's where they, they congregate. So you have to try and get your, your bait down. Now you can do lures on the top water for them, but we were in this particular case trying to get it down. And it was like, it was like the jungle version of the, uh, the operation game, you know, where you're just trying to get oh, right, yeah. right in there. And then when these things hit your line, when I describe it as a car accident, that's exactly what it is. The impact of that thing hitting your line, the force that comes up through, I pulled a muscle. I didn't even catch that one. The shock of your whole body just, it's like a car accident. And it's not my, what happened? What did happen? I just never knew there was such a thing that could have such force. So the one that it, I did caught several, but the one that I have the photo of, you know, this whole rain, this rainstorm had happened and I'm fighting this fish and it comes up out of the water and it's just twisting around and its head is this big with teeth. Um, it, it truly looks like it wants to kill you. Right. And, and then, so you're fighting to, to be witness to that sort of sheer force from a freshwater fish was so surprising to me. And so now I'm a little bit obsessed with the wolf fish. So I'm thinking, my God, how do those things, how big do they get? Yeah. So that's my next mission is to see if I can catch a bigger one. But in the photo, you can see like, it's just huge. Yeah. Oh, you're holding it out. No, it's right there. I could hardly lift it. And so those two fish in particular were pretty astounding. All right. Very good. Oh, I appreciate you sharing that. And just Seeing your photos on the social sites, it, for me, it's just, it's amazing. Now, I do, before we head out, I do have one more curiosity question. Before uh, getting to Guyana, I know you spent some time down in Colombia, and you had a, a, a chance to catch some other fish that are the, are the, are the, I forget what the, how you would say it, the piece of nightmares that, that nightmares are made out of, the piranha. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Tell us about the piranha. And by the way, do they really taste like chicken or they taste like, what do they <laughs> taste like? So there's different, there's different types of piranha. In Guyana, I was catching the black piranha, which has a, a big, wide jaw and it's a much bigger fish mm -hmm. overall. In Colombia, there's the red belly piranha, which, um, I hear are they're sort of described as being more aggressive, um, but they're smaller and they've got a smaller mouth, but they're mighty. I mean, they're just they're fierce, too. So I was fishing for the red belly piranha and, and fishing for those. It's quite easy. You just make a lot of commotion in the water and they're there. Uh -huh. so, um, so so by instinct, they go after things that are in distress, like like a fish um, in distress or an injured animal kind of thing. Sure. Or, when when we were there, we our guy uh, guide hooked up some for us, and these were the small ones. They're they're, they're very bony. Uh, well, I would equate them more to a, a chicken leg than okay. chicken. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so they'll flavor them, and they're a bit crunchy, um, almost like a like a potato chip. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. All right. So. Anisha, before we head out, and, and I think in some ways you've all, you've shared a lot of this, uh, uh, the aha moments, which is a feature of our podcast where we ask our guests to kind of sit back and think, wow, guess what I am get, get to do? I can't believe I get to do this. But is there any other aha moment that you would like to share with our listeners about the journey you've been on, I mean, you're the award-winning uh, reporter and investigative journalist, and now you are getting ready to lead um, experiences down into the, the rainforest in Guyana. Any other aha moment somewhere within that, that span of a time and experience that you'd like to share? Yeah, I think um, I, I would say there was, wouldn't be just one in, in that. I, my aha moments come from being able to inspire people. When you, when you do something or you say something or you, 
you're a part of something that matters and then it and that it impacts somebody and then that comes full circle back to you and you find out that you had an influence in somebody's life in some way that was meaningful that to me is the ultimate aha moment so in this in this realm in this phase of what i'm doing being able to offer that inspiration and it, it, i, I want to find the right women to go on this trip and I, and I haven't found them yet but i'm looking for them and i want them um to be the right women but for people who can say wow i want to do that you've inspired me to do that you've inspired me to consider that because you've done it i i like what i see you've given me the confidence to feel like i can do that too so when people and give me that kind of feedback that's an aha moment for me because it means something very good thank you for that any other insight uh, that you'd like to share with our listeners about the work that you're doing and in some ways what you just shared is also an insight to go but you know, any quote, an article, just a, a thought uh, based, based on the work you've been doing and what you're passionate about that you'd like to share with our listeners? Yeah, when I worked in news for almost 20 years, there was, there was a, lot of, a lot of bad things that happened in the world, and we can't always control those things. And so it's, it was hard to, it wasn't hard to report on them. It was important to report on them. But to be able to do the work I do now, is a work of passion um, in fishing and outdoors and, and being passionate in that way. And so I heard a quote some years ago from somebody, and I wish I knew who it came from. Um, and they said, if someone made a movie about your life, would you go and see it? And I think that's so profound. It's never left to my mind because you think about, I've really never stepped outside the box or I've never really challenged myself. So when you think of your own life in those terms, what is it that you haven't done? I, I say, you know, do things that uh, take those risks that scare you because that's where you're going to find growth. Be grateful for the things that you do have, but don't miss life. Don't miss the moment that you could do something new and exciting for your life. Very nice. I love that. And we'll see if we can find uh, where that quote came from. So that's the but beauty of the internet know, and it. artificial intelligence. And you never know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's, that's how we find it. <laughs> there you go. Listen, if our listeners would like to learn more about you and your work, where are the best places for them to go? There's a couple of places we would love for people to go on, on Facebook, we have uh, Reality R-E-E-L hyphen A-L-I-T-Y. Follow us on Facebook. We'll be doing a lot of content there. We're building a website that is still under construction, but reality.com will be that web address. I'm also very active on LinkedIn under Anitra Hamper. Uh, the same with uh, Facebook and Instagram. So Whatever way is convenient for people to reach out, if people are interested in in the trips, it's inquiries, I-N-Q-U-I-R-I-E-S, at real-ality.com. I would love to hear from folks. I hope we, I hope we didn't scare anybody. It's to, it's to be so exciting, and I really cannot wait to be that conduit for women to to do this trip, but then have the confidence from that to just go go you could go do it on your own go fantastic. feel calm you can do that fantastic well we will provide all the backlinks to the website and to the social sites and i most certainly uh, am in your corner and uh, so would and hope that some way we can uh, help find some women who are going to be right for this type of adventure and experience because I just think it's a phenomenal adventure and I'm a little envious, but uh, I think I need to put a few more uh, line lures in the water before I can attempt a, a wolf fish or an air pima, but uh, that's that's a whole other story. Listen, Anitra, I really appreciate you taking the time uh, from 
uh, your 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 life, living your best life out there in a country that I just love in the the UK, and just uh, I love the background for our listeners behind Anitra is uh, some fishing poles, a bookcase, some, some photos, some nice flowers, and what I don't see is her cuppa. It's I sure it's somewhere uh, around a oh, cup of water. I, <laughs> I was looking at the cup of tea in a nice china flower china or something like that, but. Uh, <laughs> I know, go out, listen, I know time zone wise, go out there, have a great uh, uh, weekend. And really, I'm very grateful that you were able to take some time today to chat with our audience and really to share the, your adventure about reality. So thank you again. Thanks, Howard, so much. It's a, it's a pleasure. And as always, so I really appreciate you having me back. Very good. Listen, stay in the line. We're going to do a quick close and you and I can have a final chat. Okay. okay. All right, folks, we have just been chatting with Anitra Hamper, uh, award-winning travel and outdoor journalist specializing in fishing around the world. And today we learned about her newest venture with her partner uh, and I really want you to encourage you, if you know anyone who is into extreme sports, uh, it loves the adve- the sense of adventure, getting out of their comfort zone, way out of their comfort zone for that matter. They really, and they are experienced anglers. We hope that they will check out uh, Anitra's uh, adventure, reality, and just imagine going down into South America, into the jungle, and then these, these, this long trip, and but just m- multiple days of just fishing and, and and really this experience of being out in nature but coming face-to-face with some of the most ancient fish that have been around really forever, the arapaima, the wolffish, the piranha, and gaining the confidence through this uh, experience of of learning how to not only uh, work the, the equipment, but also the experience of landing the fish. And just imagine you in the water holding this arapaima or this wolffish. How cool would that be? So you got to check this out. And if you know anybody that's interested in this and it's an ideal client for Anitra, do share this episode with them. Now, we're going to provide backlinks to Anitra's website, reality.com, as well as to the social sites on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. As for us, you can find us on our website, outdooradventureseries.com. You'll find the links to our episodes also on Facebook and on LinkedIn or wherever you listen to your podcast. Until then, go out there, have a phenomenal day, and we will see you on a future episode of the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. Take care now.